Hi everyone, early this week, the test results of JLPT, Japanese Language Proficiency Test, I took last month, was announced. And I'm happy to share with you that I passed the N2, the second highest level. So today, I want to share how I studied and what I learned over the 10 months of studying. But before we get into that, I want to spend a minute or two about why I took the N2 when there are five different levels of JLPT. N1 being the most difficult and N5 being the easiest. So let's dive in. The primary reason I took the N2 was practicality. What do I mean by that? After hearing from quite a few of test takers, I learned that N2 and N3 cover most of Japanese use in everyday situations. Learning this difference, I decided not to go for N1 because I will probably forget everything if I'm not going to use it after the test. So my choice was between N2 and N3, and usually you can take JLPT every July and December, but because of COVID, July 2021 test was cancelled in Malaysia. So I decided to go for N2 because I thought 9 months is enough to prepare for N2. Another reason I chose N2 is because N2 is the minimum prerequisite by most employers in Japan. And it also gives you points for preferential treatment when you want to immigrate to Japan. So I was like, hmm, no one knows how life will unfold. I might be considering immigrating to Japan 10 years later. And that's why I took JLPT N2 instead of N3. Okay, enough about why I took the N2. Honestly, what level to take depends on your need. If you just want to hold a basic conversation with Japanese on your next trip to Japan, N4 or even N5 would suffice. But if you are someone like me who welcomes academic challenge, you might want to go for N2 or even N1. Speaking of challenge, I believe you might be wondering how long it took me to study enough to barely pass the N2. In the beginning of this video, I said 10 months, but more specifically, I studied 810 hours in 293 days. To give you perspective, that is a little less than 3 hours of studying including weekends and holidays for a little less than 10 months. Now, let me break down for you how I spent 810 hours so you have a better idea. Basically, I spent 650 hours in active studying and 160 hours in consuming Japanese contents like games, anime, and entertainment shows. The very first day, I started by memorizing hiragana and katakana, the Japanese alphabet, and then I watched basic Japanese conversation lessons online. After that, I bought and finished a basic Japanese grammar book, which was about 300 pages. Around this time, I also watched N4 and N5 level grammar lessons online. And after having some understanding of basic grammars and conversations, I bought a book to memorize 1000 kanji, which is strongly recommended to N2 test takers. After finishing this book once, I bought another book to study vocabularies and started memorizing N3 to N5 level vocabs. To pass JLPT N2, you are recommended to memorize 6000 vocabs. And of course, I had to do the second reading and third reading of kanji book and vocab book because I'm not a genius who can memorize everything just by looking at it once. While memorizing kanji and vocabs, I started studying N3 level grammars as well. And this is when I started playing Japanese games and watching Japanese anime to improve my listening skill. I spent about 160 hours on this, but unfortunately, devouring Japanese contents did not improve my listening skill as much as I wanted. And later I learned that passive listening is not that effective once you hit the age of 13. So if you are planning to watch Japanese anime as an excuse to study for JLPT, you better think again. So as an alternative, I purchased two digital books called Nihongo Dango Speedo Masta, one each for N3 and N2. Each book comes with downloadable MP3, and I assure you, this method was much much better way of improving my listening skills than playing games or watching anime. 
The last book I bought was a JLPT and two practice workbook. It had practice problems on all three sections of the test, vocab slash grammar, reading, and listening sections. As you can see, um, all the materials I used are in Korean because I'm native Korean. So my apologies if you're here to find out what study materials are the best for English speakers learning Japanese. I just don't know, sorry. Other than what I have mentioned already was just taking mock tests and revisiting the sections where I felt least confident, mostly listening and reading. So that was a quick summary of how I passed JLPT N2. I know to most people, JLPT N2 is not really what they're looking for. Most people are more interested in learning how to speak Japanese rather than reading Japanese. But JLPT, strangely, does not test your speaking ability. Anyways, if you're thinking about taking JLPT N2, I want to say it is pretty challenging test with a pass rate of 40%, meaning 60% of test takers fail. But I want to also let you know it is possible to do it in 10 months even if you're working a 9 to 6 job like me. So I hope sharing my experience will help you set right expectation and better prepare for the JLPT N2. Please leave me a comment if you have any questions. I will try to answer your questions to the best of my knowledge. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.